is good and all the time. We are requested to pray for the dispose of uh, James Maida's soul in this mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and ask God to pardon us as we prepare ourselves to celebrate this Mass. I confess to Almighty God that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous faults. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, F. a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give for who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and strive after all that does it honor through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The angel of the Lord appeared to Moses in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, and he led his flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Horeb the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush was burning, yet it was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. When the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, do not come near, Put off your shoes from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. And he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, Now, behold, the cry of the sons of Israel has come to me, and I have seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come, I will send you to Pharaoh, 
that you may bring forth my people, the sons of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the sons of Israel out of Egypt? He said, But I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that I have sent you. When you have brought forth the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God upon this mountain. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm. The Lord is compassionate and gracious. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all within me his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and never forget all his benefits. The Lord is compassionate and gracious. It is the Lord who forgives all your sins, who heals every one of your ills, who redeems your life from the grave, who crowns you with mercy and compassion. The Lord is compassionate and gracious. The Lord does just deeds, gives full justice to all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses and his deeds to the children of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious. Gospel acclamation. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. to me by my father and no one knows the son except the father and no one knows the father except the son and anyone to whom the son chooses to reveal him the gospel of the Lord Moses received the assignment from God to go back to Egypt and bring his people to Mount Helop. The sons of Israel, he asked him, Who am I? And I strongly suspect uh, this that God told him, I know you are Moses, and I have just called you by your name. And come to think of it, 
one's name is very important. It is the first asset one acquires on one's day of earthly life. And it is the only constant that remains through one's entire life. I am Wamute, the little boy that I was when I was one day old in this life. And many years later, I still answer to that name. And many years to come, I will still be answering to that name. And the same applies to all human beings who have names. And I think Moses asked the right question. Because if he asked, what am I? His self-definition and presentation before God would have interfered with the mission God gave him. Because sometimes men and women start vis-a-vis -vis God on account of what they think they have and they have acquired so that they accept what God asks them to do. Given that one's name is the only constant in one's life and it is the first asset one acquires on their first day of other existence, it's what should remind us of the necessity to remain childlike all the time before God. And children are very trusting. Children are very dependent. Children obey. So Moses was told, you go back to Egypt. You murdered an Egyptian. And people in Egypt know that. But you go. And you're not going alone. I will walk with you to Egypt and come back with you here. And when you reach at the foot of this mountain with the people of Israel, you will know that I sent you and that I was with you and that I did not abandon you. God is asking us to have a childlike attitude in discerning what his assignments are for us today. He may not give you any special assignment. You may just live your life today the way you lived it yesterday or last week in its entirety. But should he have a special assignment for you, be ready for it. And don't present any other attitude in terms of your qualification or lack of them. He knows us. And once he walks with us, every step of the assignment he asks us to do, we succeed because of his grace and nothing else. But as a country, at this point in time, we need leaders who can listen to God, telling them what Kenyans need. Let's pray for anybody and everybody who claims to be a leader in this country so that they may listen to God's voice concerning Kenyans a desire for peace. Nothing more, nothing less. And let us pray that should they perceive that they be ready, that they be ready to let go everything that has to be sacrificed for the sake of peace in our motherland. Moses had to remove his shoes. I don't know what you and me are going to be asked to receive, to remove, so that we can comply with God's will. Whatever it is that he asks you to remove, please do not be afraid. 
because he will replace what you remove with his graces and God's power is hidden in human weakness. Just take a moment and reflect about our sharing this morning. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for from your goodness we have prepared we offer fruit of the earth and work of human hearts to become for us our blood of life. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sacrifice brought to completion, valid offerings of the law, accept we pray this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you blessed the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that you tell our salvation always and every year to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through you, for although you have no need of our praise, 
Yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord and so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with the joy we acclaim. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray by setting down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was added, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith when we eat this bread and drink this cup. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Philip, and your Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, James Maina, whom you have called from this life, from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, all we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be called heirs to eternal life and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father who art in heaven, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as he forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of mercy, of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. 
the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lord. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and in those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord.